in the middle of the Second World War, Winston Churchill had a plan. He was going to help occupied Europe by setting in a blaze. But he needed some secret agents to do this. And one of them was a lady called Sonia Butt. Welcome to Kentish Tales and Tales of Kent. <laughs> Sonia Butt was born here in East Church. There's the church on the Isle of Shetney. It's raining today, I'm hiding under a tree. But she didn't spend a lot of time here because her dad was in the RAF and he spent a lot of his years uh, out in North Africa. That meant that she spent a lot of her years in France, in private schools, in boarding schools. And she was there when in 1940 the Nazis invaded France. She didn't want to stay in the country, quite understandably, uh, so she went to her headmistress and asked to borrow some money. With that money, she managed to get to the coast, to Calais. She then managed to convince the French authorities um, that she should be let out of the country because she didn't have her passport with her. Then uh, she managed to get on a boat, get to Britain, and then she had to convince the people in Britain that she should be allowed into the country, she didn't have a passport. Then she had to ask more people to borrow some money to get on a train to get home. To see her mom. If you happen to go to East Church, you should probably go and look at this monument. It's the early pioneers of the aeronautic life, and it's epic, and certainly will be a tale one day. And then after that, she went to school for two years. Not this one, obviously. And then she wanted to help out with the war effort, so she joined the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, and she found that really quite dull. Um, but she did happen to mention to somebody uh, that she was a bit of an expert in French. And they said this could be quite useful. So she was taken along to an apartment just off Baker Street. And they were very interested in her. And they asked her, have you ever heard of the SOE? By 1940, the Nazis occupied most of Europe. And Winston Churchill and the British government had to fight back. So they came up with the SOE, the Special Operations Executive designed to send special agents into occupied Europe to help train the resistance fighters and send them munitions to help sabotage the German war effort. So Sonia Butt decided she would join the SOE. Their French was rigorously tested. It was the only language they were allowed to speak at the breakfast table. And they were also taught about the petit nuance of French life. For example, French people do not put their knife and fork in the middle of the plate when they're finished. Oh no. Instead, they put it at the side. On one of the training exercises, she was asked, if you look around this group of people, who all have numbers on, who would you feel most comfortable spending 48 hours with? She looked around all of them, and she spied one man in particular, and she wrote down his number, it was on his chest. Luckily for her, he wrote down her number too. His name was Guy de Artois, a Canadian French airman. She would get to know him a lot better soon. On her training courses in various parts of the UK, she learnt many different skills. For example, she learnt how to sabotage. We were told to attack transformers wherever we could. It was evidently no use blowing up pylons, as they could be repaired too quickly. She learnt radio work. Receiving, coding and decoding. Morse, morse and more morse. I dreamt in morse learnt how to fire weaponry. She learnt how to parachute. The balloon jump was the worst. During her time training, she got closer and closer to Guy. On one of their training jumps together, she gave Guy a wink just before they were about to leap out of the plane. On the way down, clearly Guy had a lot of time to think. And when they both landed, Guy got down on one knee and proposed to her. Soon, they were married. Their superiors were not very impressed because they realised if both of them 
landed in the same place in France, they could be tortured in front of each other and were far more likely to give out secrets. So instead, they informed the pair that they would be separated and sent to different parts of France. At this point, Sonia threw into a rage and said, as she had a right to do so, I refuse to go at all. But they did send Guy and Sonia felt guilty and realised she wanted to be part of the action. So she begged to be sent. So they decided to send her. Her codename would be Blanche and she would fly in to occupied France. She was to be dropped near Le Mans in an area crawling with Nazis. The parachute landing did not go according to plan and she landed heavily, injuring her shoulder and her back. As she looked up, she heard a rustling in the bushes. She knew the person she was meant to meet was a man called Andre. And she said, is that you, Andre? And the reply was, no, Andre is dead. He was killed by the Bosch two days ago. A couple of elderly French men came out from the trees and helped cut her parachute and bury it. And she escaped into the night with the sound of German vehicles in the distance. Unfortunately for Sonia, German soldiers had discovered her package containing all of her clothes. Now they knew there was a British woman spy in the area. She had to walk 30 miles to get to her safe house. It would be too suspicious to walk through the fields, so they had to walk down the roads. At one point, an armoured truck rolled past full of German soldiers. She was absolutely terrified. But at that point, they all saw her and started catcalling her and shouting out what an attractive young lady she was. Thank you. This was one of the reasons why the SOE started picking female agents to go over to France. The French government had just passed a law which meant that hundreds of thousands of young French men were forced to go and work in German factories. So it was relatively rare to see young French men on the roads. A woman, on the other hand, could pass by, possibly using her female wiles to outsmart the Nazis. <laughs> She grew increasingly confident. She didn't mind going into French cafes. Now listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. Um, surrounded by local people and also Nazi officers. One colonel took a particular shine to her and would talk to her on a daily basis. In one of their meetings, a handbag accidentally hit the floor and let out an almighty clank. Clearly there was a large metal object in it, which was her revolver. She looked into his eyes and immediately realised he knew that. Uh, but luckily she had a forged uh, sheet from the Gestapo, which said she was allowed to carry a weapon. This made him think that she must be a high-ranking officer's mistress, or perhaps she was an undercover German spy herself. So in their future meetings, he told her even more information, including that there was an undercover British agent in the area and she should watch out. talking to each other and then she would suggest perhaps they'd like to go for a bicycle ride into the countryside. Then she would say, as a true French woman, I find it difficult to live in this time to see France brought so low. And then the man would say, if only there was something I could do to help. And she would say, actually there is, you can join the resistance. Then she would explain who she was and then offer to train them in weaponry because Unfortunately, their weapons trainer had died, been killed by the Germans quite recently. They were often taken quite aback by this because France at the time didn't even allow women to have the vote. But she said to them, oh, it's quite a tricky thing learning to shoot, but soon enough you'll be better than me. She was famed for bringing 10, 12, 20 Frenchmen out into the different resistance camps. Soon she would teach her eager young recruits how to use a Bren gun. 
and they didn't have much ammunition so they couldn't afford to waste any in terms of training so they'd have to go out and use it on somebody so they would hide in the woods overlooking a road and then when a german convoy came past <laughs> They would open fire, spraying it with bullets, <laughs> killing Germans left, right and centre. She would then tell her troops to flee into the woods and disperse. But before they went, she said to them, ah, you know how to use a brain gun now. Next time, it'll be a Tommy gun. On the 8th of August, the American forces swept into Le Mans and liberated the city. This was great news. Unfortunately, not so much so for Sonia, uh, because locals thought that she'd been collaborating with the Nazis. Worse, that she'd been horizontally collaborating with the Nazis. So some young roughs took her, beat her up, and they were about to shave off her hair, as they did with many others, and tie her to a lamppost when resistance fighters went, well, no, 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 no. She spent the entire war working for us. You would think at this point, with France about to be liberated by the Allies, that she would give up, go home, live a normal life. Au contraire. Instead, she volunteered to go behind enemy lines. She'd get in a car, drive towards the German forces, bluff her way past them, um, using documents suggesting that she was a collaborator, and then she would report on the numbers of Germans that were there and which troops were massing. At one stage, thinking that she was going to get back to American lines, she put the American flag on her car, only to find she was faced with a checkpoint of German soldiers. They opened fire, her car crashed, um, she found that her shirt had a hole in it, she just narrowly escaped being shot, and then she was captured. But she was able to bluff her way out of it and they let her go. Then de Gaulle of France didn't take uh, a good view of the SOE. He saw them as foreign uh, people messing with France. Uh, so he ordered that all SOE agents be removed. Um, she was happy to go with Guy to start a new life in Canada, where they had several children. Sir Frederick Morgan, who is one of the planners of D-Day, described the SOE agents as pitting themselves, each individually, in lonely, personally deadly combat against all the powers of Nazi darkness. Now, I know people don't tend to build statues to people anymore so much, but if you were going to build a statue in East Church, you'd want to build a statue to Sonia Butt, Sonia d'Artois. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to learn more, you can click on the link below and you'll find a website, which is a whole load of reading material that I use to produce this. Um, if you have any ideas, thoughts, feelings, emotions about people, places, or time periods that you'd like covered, then you can pop them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching Kentish Tales and Tales of Kent.